breakfast. Yeah, well, hey, I'm really sorry. Yeah. Hey, I'm really sorry, too. I really needed this. When I... That's Omega Savings. That's Omega Mart. Kevin is a writer, a director, an executive producer. The guy behind the View Askew universe, uh, Zach and Miri, Mika Porno, Tusk, uh, Yuga, Hosers, uh, the Holidays 2016 Halloween segment, um, Bear Nation, Clerks Animated. He owns a comic store called Jane Silent Bob's Secret Stash and worked on comics like Head Girl in Hollywood, The Bionic Woman, uh, Daredevil and Bullseye Target, uh, Green Arrow, Quiver, Batman, The Wide, The Widening Geyer. He's a guy fairly well known in the comic scene. He's created quite a name for himself amongst uh, comic fans and uh, fans of like movies and shit. And uh, his uh, view skewed uh, universe especially. Since like the uh, first movie back in like 95, I believe, uh, Clerks, he's become like pretty famous and worked on the production for Superman Lives, the Felix production, you know, that didn't go anywhere. That was like helmed by uh, Tim Byrne. Go Silver. Get yours today. I said get yours today. To order Amazon Echo Silver, send a check or money order to Amazon.com right now. Now that you know who Kevin Smith is, uh, now it's time to get into fucking the Green Hornet shit, baby. Hell yeah. Uh, back in the 90s, uh, Miramax grabbed the rights to the Green Hornet property for a film. Uh, they did fucking like nothing with it, basically. Until, uh, 2004, when Harvey Weinstein, uh, you know the fucking, like, that, that guy, uh, you know, that bastard, got a hold of, uh, Kevin Smith, who, uh, worked on further, uh, films with him. And, like, uh, they got together to work on, uh, the Green Hornet movie. A comic movie, um, something that hasn't, uh, been done for Smith, uh, since Superman Lives. Which like failed in like the late 90s and like he like fucking left it like never wanted to do like a, another uh, Never wanted to do another um superhero film again, but uh he got a hold of uh Weinstein they talked they started to work on it then like shit fell through uh, Kevin didn't like the direction and like shit didn't like go well with like screen treatment at uh, Miramax It like ultimately uh didn't pan out well at uh, Miramax So uh Smith did other shit Changer, Miracle Arranger, born to the virgin mom in a manger, water to wine. Then in 2010, um, Nick Brosi, uh, Dynamite Comics president, got hold of uh, the screenplay, uh, then got Phil Hester, um, an artist and writer, and Jonathan Liu, an artist, uh, try to get like uh, Smith, who at first said like, no thank you, uh, then he was sent those like first pencilings of the uh, screenplay achievement, and right off the bat, after like seeing those initial like uh, pencils, he got he got working on project with them from the start of like the book being made. Um, and the funny thing is, um, f I believe uh, Phil Hester, him and like Smith worked on like two or three other comic books before this one. Anyways, okay, so Hester, Lou, and Smith got work on the project, and uh, um, it did pretty damn well. And I can't like fucking like establish. Dynamite Comics as like this fucking uh, sanctuary for like outdated pop heroes from like the 30s and, so and shit and like reinvent them uh, modern times and uh, they became really popular for doing that you know like fucking um, uh, the masks 
uh, crossover, the Superpowers uh, universe. As the project uh, wrapped up in uh, 2013, Kevin Smith said, I may go in and uh, polish the dialogue, but this is what the movie would be. I didn't go in and say, fuck it, let's change all this, or let's drop this. There was a certain integrity to it, where we wanted to honor the script. Not that it was a, such a great script, but that's how we saw the project. This is what the movie could have been. Uh, Smith talking to uh, CBR News. I know comic book uh, reader news, I believe. Um, when it was all said and done, the book was a success and arguably brought Green Hornet to a new kind of popularity that the Rogan movie really couldn't achieve. And Dynamite managed to craft a new comic universe out of a dropped script from 2004 uh, from someone who by 2010 wasn't really well liked by the comic fandom at large. And uh, managed like reinvent his career and like fucking like bring him. Uh, we're not, not really reading but like, uh, re-establish his, like, career, uh, amongst, like, comic fans. Spider-Man. Name something that gives you the chills. My back! Name an insect that flies. Little Goblin Jr. Name something in your house that creaks. This damn door! fucking story of the book then well, like what's going on with that sh with that, that shit you know uh well fucking read the book you know just like do that shit i guess uh, that's the video bye uh now nah, i'm just fucking with you okay um so i gave you the like general like rundown i don't want to spoil it too much but like spoilers ahead okay so <laughs> It starts out with Green Hornet and Kato doing their shit, you know, like fucking busting bad guys and whatever. And uh, they bust like the final two uh, big gangs of like the city. And then Kato retires and uh, moves to China, uh, while Brett takes care of his kid and um, his wife. And the story cuts to an aged Brett humping the mayor uh, get reelected. Brett's wife died, and uh, Brett Jr. loses his girlfriend and uh, Juama, a game company helmed by a drama member uh, of, the fam of the family trying to like make up for his like dad dishonoring the drama family after Green Hornet and Kato stopped him as a crime boss. That's just how it uh, starts. In the next issue, spoilers by the way, uh, Brit fucking dies from a figure called the Black Hornet. This happens during a house party supporting the mayor's re-election by Brit uh, Sr. The Black Hornet attacks while Brett and Brett Jr. fight the Black Hornet gang off. Then a mysterious woman uh, crashes in and attacks the gang, but it's uh, too late and Brett is fucking dead. After that, you gotta read the rest of the book for yourself, fucking uh, goddammit. But, okay fine, I can send the spoiler real quick. Brett Jr. runs into like uh, the original Kato and Mulan Kato and her cousin Clutch and Kato uh, the Kiddo family came after, like, uh, Brett's funeral happened and shit to, like, find, uh, the guy who, like, killed Brett Sr., uh, the Green Hornet. And, like, the, uh, like, idea is, like, fucking to send, like, uh, Brett Jr., the son, off to China. So, like, fucking, like, he, you know, like, isn't, like, a liability and shit. While the, the Kiddo family hunts down the killer. Then, like, fucking record scratch. Okay, for real. I'm, uh, gonna stop. The rest of the story explores, like, how corrupt the mayor is what drama is doing in Century City, which is like what the um, city is like dubbed in like this continuity. And um, explore Kato uh, passing the torch to Mulan, Clutch, and Burt Jr. It's a good book. Uh, story is interesting. Uh, the backup story with uh, Lady Death helps build on the first story, but I prefer the main story, especially with like um, how the characters build to like this intense finale. I liked how Phil Hester and Jonathan Liu helped bring Smith's script to life. Like, um, along with the script, like, with understanding, like, who the characters are. It's just, like, candy for the eyes and a uh, really fucking good book. And I liked it a lot. Um, according to, like, Smith, uh, Phil, and uh, Liu, he's, like, planning to come back to the book at some point. But right now, um, he's working on the uh, treatment for a Green Hornet, like, animated series. That's... Uh, basically, uh, I mean, like, I don't know how, like, far the treatment, like, for the Green Hornet series is. 
So I'm not like sure like where it's at like right now. But um, I'd be looking enough for it because like I mean fucking like uh, if he like did this kind of job like making the characters like come back to life uh, for this book, I think like he could like do a real good job at like uh, making uh, you know an animated show of the character. Uh, so here's like a, a quick like fun like side note. Uh, when Seth Rogen was like making treatment Green Hornet, uh, the 2011 movie, and like I saw the trailer, like it's been like some guys like the main bad guy. Uh, Kevin Smith recommended to Seth Rogen to like uh, put the mask on the bad guy, make him like a like, comic book villain, because that's like what people like wanted to see back then, like you know like actual comic book villains and like shit guys in like fucking like suits, you know, uh, go through with that. Because, like, the main bad guy of, like, the fucking uh, Rogan movie is, like, just some guy in a red suit. Ah! What happened? It's colorblind. I can't fly.